for our pastor's devotion in the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We're going to look at question 79. This is going to wrap up our Ten Commandments series by simply asking, what is the Tenth Commandment? The answer is, the Tenth Commandment is, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Now, before we dive into this particular verse and these uh, teachings on coveting, I want to make a few observations about the Ten Commandments overall. Now, if you look at the structure of the Ten Commandments, it begins with the call to avoid idolatry and to worship the one true God. And then the Ten Commandments ends with our desire for coveting. And so both of these bookends point to the desires of our heart, our tendency when we don't worship the true God, to have God replacements, or to give our ultimate devotion to the created things rather than the creator. And then we see this uh, desire of idolatry expressed in coveting, that we have an excessive desire which causes us to demand what others have. As a matter of fact, that's one simple way to define what it means to covet. It's an excessive desire. We're talking about a desire gone mad. This is a desire that's beyond normal desire that demands what others have. Now, another thing I want to point out here is that as we look at the Ten Commandments in this particular commandment, we see how they interrelate with each other. For instance, you could say that not coveting covers the full gamut of the Ten Commandments. Why is it that we commit adultery? Because we desire uh, excessively the wife or husband of another, and we must have them for ourselves, so we commit adultery. Why is it that we steal? Because we covet something that does not belong to us so much that we desire it and we demand that we have it. Why is it that we kill? Sometimes it's because we desire something from someone they will not give us. And so instead of living life without it, we take their life. You see, all these commandments are connected and especially this call to not covet. So what do we do with this commandment? Well, one thing we don't want to do is deny our desires. You see, God has made us as desiring beings, the beings that have a deep desire for fullness of joy in something that lasts forever. How do I know this? Well, if you look at Psalm 16, we see in God's presence, there's fullness of joy and your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And so we see here is that God has made us to find full, satisfying, all-encompassing joy in relationship with him and a joy that doesn't diminish but lasts forever. You see, this joy is only found as we pursue the Lord and trust in the Lord. We see in Psalm 37 that uh, the psalmist calls us to turn from our covetous, envious hearts to the Lord and find our desires in him. So look at Psalm 37, uh, verse 1 through 4. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they soon fade away like grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. And hear this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, how do we avoid envying what others have? By learning to trust God in our present circumstances and learning to delight in God more than the thing we wish we had. You see, Philippians 4 gets at this in a very often misquoted verse. Philippians 4.12 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if we look at the context there, Paul is saying, I have learned the secret to having plenty and lacking much. What is that secret? It's contentment. And so when Paul calls us to do all things through Christ, what he's saying is not that we have all this power to get what we want, but that in Jesus Christ, through our relationship with Jesus, we have our heart's desires. Because Jesus gave up his desires uh, for self-preservation, and he... For the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, because he desired our joy and had a joy of future communion with us, he endured the cross. He took the penalty of our coveting to the cross, died and rose again, that we might find through Jesus the strength to endure all things. And that is that we find joy in Christ over all things. So this is the way that we avoid coveting, excessive desire, that demands what others have. How? By trusting in Jesus, the desire of our heart, the one who satisfies our deepest longings. Let's pray to him.
Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you that you offer to us satisfying food, which gives us our heart's desire. Oh God, help us to trust in Jesus, to look and to long for him, to find in him fullness of joy that lasts forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Find your joy and desire in him and pursue his love. Have a great day.